after shit. There we go. There we go. On the turn. Doesn't feel huge, but could be swimming at me. You can see the Dodger flashing way back there. It's putting up a good fight now. Let's see what we got here. Could it be a rosy belt rainbow or is it a Roosevelt kokanee? First fish of the day. It's a nice kokanee. Let's see if we can get him in the net here. Got him. <laughs> yes. Not a 20 incher, but it's a solid 16, 17 inch fish. Take that any day. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, so there it is. Not the big 20 inchers I was hoping for, but man, that's still a really big kokanee. Fat and healthy. Solid 16, 17. On a pink and purple Paulina Peak. And their pink and moon jelly dodger in there. Nice fish. All right, let's get a bonked and blade. That one had maggots on the front of bait. There we go. Beautiful kokanee. Look at the size of that thing. That thing's amazing. I know they get a lot bigger here, but boy, I'm always happy to take home a big 16, 17 inch coke. Let's get a measurement on him. Let's get a measurement. Yep, 17 inches right on the money. Just like I thought. That is what we come here for at Lake Roosevelt at these really big kokanee. This one is not a giant by any means, but still this early in the season to be catching 17 inch kokanee is just incredibly impressive. So let's keep at it. See if we can't find uh, an even bigger one. Now one of the most interesting things about kokanee at Lake Roosevelt is that there's actually been a fair amount of research done on them because there's so many unknowns about this fishery. It's got to be one of the more restricted kokanee fisheries that there are in the western United States. And that's because there's just so very little known about the origins of these fish, what the population size is like. It's very clear that they are abundant. And so there's been uh, a lot of genetic work and tracking studies looking at these fish. And it's, it's very interesting, especially uh, as an angler trying to better understand this fishery. So one big question is, is where are all of these kokanee coming from in Lake Roosevelt? Lake Roosevelt did have a, a kokanee hatchery program. They're planting kokanee, but... Uh, it never really succeeded because it was a marked fishery, so they were clipping the fins, and very few of those fish were showing up in the recreational catch. Um, so virtually all of the fish that I've ever caught here, the large fish, in fact, all of the kokanee I've caught in, in my lifetime in Lake Roosevelt have all been wild fish. And one of the more widely accepted hypotheses um, that I hear from fisheries biologists in the region um, is that these fish entrain from reservoirs upstream. That is, they're getting washed downstream from places like Coeur d'Alene, uh, Pend Oreille, and uh, other reservoirs in Canada um, that support kokanee populations. However, there's been considerable research on the genetics of Lake Roosevelt kokanee, um, and it's ongoing. They're still doing additional research, but they've sampled you know thousands of kokanee um, from different populations across the region and from Kokanee here in Lake Roosevelt and compared the genetics. Now, there's lots of different techniques for comparing populations of Kokanee using genetics. Some of them are more powerful at discerning differences between populations than others, but 
the common theme that's coming out of this uh, of these studies is there's two main things. Um, first, there was a study that looked at are they of historical origin? Are they somehow related to sockeye salmon that historically ran up here that got trapped here before the dam was built? And they did compare the kokanee here with sockeye that run up uh, the Columbia River into the Okanagan and some of them that go all the way to Chief Joe Dam and they were not that closely related to sea run sockeye salmon. What that study did show is that they are primarily related to Canadian Columbia River kokanee populations. So that is likely the source population for these fish. However, interestingly enough, another study that looked at uh, just how different these kokanee populations here in Lake Roosevelt were from other kokanee populations in the area showed that there's actually quite a bit of genetic separation between the Columbia River fish and, and the Canadian Columbia River fish and the fish here that opens the door to the possibility that there is potentially an unidentified breeding population within Lake Roosevelt. Now we know that some kokanee spawn in the sand poil, but it's not nearly enough to represent the number of wild fish we're seeing in the lake. And that's very intriguing that there, there may in fact be an unknown breeding population of kokanee, perhaps deep shore spawning kokanee, somewhere in Lake Roosevelt, and we just don't know where it is. We do know that from lots of surveys that most of the feeder streams into the lake do not support sufficient numbers of breeding kokanee to explain the number of kokanee, the wild kokanee we're seeing in this lake. So very interesting uh, studies, and I'm really curious to see uh, more of that research coming out as it goes along. Now there's plenty of opportunity to target these big Roosevelt kokanee throughout the year, but the peak season is generally from March until early June uh, most years, and and that tends to coincide with uh, the period that they're really drawing down the reservoir heavily, and just as they start to fill it. Uh, these fish will be feeding at or near the surface during those times, so today I'm just long lining, you know, pretty much straight back or maybe just running one ounce snap weight just to push it down a little bit deeper. Uh, but they can definitely be targeted in the winter months. But what happens is uh, during the winter months and once the reservoir sort of starts to fill and stabilize after the spring drawdown and flood is these fish spread back out. And during the peak season, they are generally found in the lower third of the reservoir. So it's a little bit easier to locate fish. Uh, but then sort of during these the shoulder seasons and off season, you'll find fish, you know, you'll find them as far up as Lincoln or maybe even further on up from there. So what happens is, and the tracking studies have demonstrated this, is that these fish tend to move downstream with the current and concentrate in the lower third of the lake as the lake is being drawn down or during the spring floods. And there's likely two reasons for that. One is that uh, kokanee, uh, like salmon, tend to like to swim with the outgoing flows during the spring. I think it's just a sort of natural instinct for them. But also, um, all of that water being drawn down through the reservoir is going to concentrate zooplankton, which is their food. So daphnia and things like that are going to concentrate. And research on distribution of zooplankton in Lake Roosevelt has shown that the highest levels of zooplankton are in the lower third of the reservoir. And that's actually a fairly common pattern that you'll see repeated in lots of kokanee reservoirs. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why zooplankton is going to concentrate in the lower third of a reservoir, especially during spring drawdown, spring flood. One reason is obviously current. I mean, zooplankton can't really swim upstream against current. To them, the viscosity of water is like us trying to swim in a, a giant swimming pool full of maple syrup. So they really can't move big distances. They just kind of have to go with the flow. But also, you know, when water enters a reservoir and starts to slow down, 
Um, it has more time to absorb energy from the sun, which is going to create more phytoplankton. That's your plankton with um, chlorophyll, so they're photosynthetic. And that forms the base of your food chain in these reservoirs. And as water slows down, um, it spends more time in the reservoir the further down the reservoir it gets, and it's had more opportunity for the sun to pump energy in there. And so it just builds up the food chain. And you'll see this repeated, like, I see this very commonly on lots of lakes, um, like Lake Merwin, uh, Roosevelt, Chelan. You'll see these fish move downstream in the spring, chasing that food gradient, that food concentration. They're moving down to where the food is. And the radio tracking studies here in Lake Roosevelt have documented that well, where uh, the vast majority of the fish stayed down the lower third of the reservoir. But interestingly, somewhere around 25% to a third of those fish entrained over the dam and left and exited the reservoir. And that is another thing that makes this fishery so interesting and probably challenging from a management perspective is that uh, it appears that, you know, potentially you could be losing a third of this reservoir's kokanee population every year going over the dam. And, and anglers have noticed that when we have really big, heavy snow years, we get a lot of flow and they end up dumping a lot of water. Uh, the years after that, the next year after that, tends to be not as good kokanee fishing because a lot of the fish, I think, will exit the reservoir and, uh, and move on to points downstream. Fish. Yep, fish. Big one too. Got him on that turn. Feels like a nice one. This could be a really big kokanee or a really big rainbow, I'm not sure. Looks like it's gonna be a big rainbow. Nice fish though. These things are so chunky, these Roosevelt rainbows. Monsters. Mounds are always a lot harder than the kokanee. There you go, big rainbow. Wild fish. Get it back in the water. There he goes. Built heavy. And it was heavy. It's a big rainbow. That is one of the nice things about Lake Roosevelt is. Yeah, um, great rainbow trout fishery. Big, healthy looking fish. Well, it's looking like it's just gonna be a one fish day, but you know, that's an infinitely better than zero fish day. So definitely gonna have to come out and uh, give Roosevelt uh, some more time so I can connect with one of those big 20 inch cokes. But this is just one lake I'll be hitting as part of my kokanee across America. A tour which is going to take me to lakes in California, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and then all the way out to Connecticut. So be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with that latest content. And a special thanks to Old Town Canoe and Kayak and Paulina Peak Tackle for making the Kokanee Across America tour possible. And of course all of my supporters who have pitched in on fundraisers and through Patreon. All right, guys, I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.